Hi, my name is Raphael Heath, the Head of Geography at the Royal High School Bath and this video is an overview of how to create geoforms in ArcGIS Online which have uh, restricted entry values like here with the ages where you can put in uh, the ages using plus or minus buttons or gen drop down boxes here, I'm using for gender, ignore my typo here and um, drop down menus here for various categories, how would you rate your level of knowledge about global warming or so on uh, in the form um, and then to be able to submit that form in the usual way uh, on the map. So uh, this is quite a useful skill if you want to restrict what people put into forms so that they only answer within certain guidelines or parameters that are useful to you like these different answers. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do, um, there might be an easier way but this is the way I do it. Uh, I need to use ArcMap to do it so you can't do it directly within ArcGIS Online. So I open up ArcMap and, and since I've done all this already I'm just going to sort of talk it through quickly rather than in real time. Um, so the first thing you do uh, when you open ArcMap here, it would be blank, uh, is you go to Art Catalog, which is just up here, open it up, it gives you your file menu structure and you find uh, a folder which you want to create this um, feature service uh, shapefile in and so on. Um, so I've just put it here into a particular folder and I go to this folder and I go New and I have to pick from this option of New File Ge Geo Database, which is just here. Um, so that's what I would do to start with. And I'll do a little bit of thinking and just give me a name. Okay, and uh, I've just called it test new one. Um, and then you'd go under the properties of that file database and it would come up like this with domains in. Uh, I'll show you one that I've done earlier to speed it up a little bit. So this one I've done under the properties of it. And you can see here you can type into things like domain name various factors like age here, a description, how old are you, and then if I go to uh, the age domain properties here, I've got a choice of what it should be, is it going to be a, an integer, a number, a whole number, or is it going to be a double, which means it has decimal points in, like 1.1, is it going to be a date or, or text value, so age is going to be a long integer, uh, and I can pick here under range or coded value, so range would mean I've got a minimum to maximum value. Let's say my respondents' ages can be between 8 and 90 years or some other range you want to provide for some data. Or I can use coded values. If I use gender, for example, here, I typed in the word gender. What is your gender? Uh, this one is going to be a text, so I chose text here instead. And I pick coded values, as you can see here, slightly different to the last one, rather than range. Um, uh, you can't use a range when it's text anyway, so it's uh, uh, irrelevant. And um, see what's happened here. And under the code here, I would put male, and then the female, um, and so on. Okay, so uh, that means that it's going to restrict the entry for this uh, particular field to just being male or female. Um, and I can put in a certain question, like a survey question. Um, do you think that uh, believe that humans are responsible for global warming, or is it natural? Again, uh, this could be a text value, but um, I'm actually going for an integer, which allows me to sort of use more numerical analysis later on this data. So I'm going to keep it as an integer. I'm going to pick coded values uh, for it. Oh, let's got rid of what I practiced. Okay, um, it's fine. So uh, let's wait to delete what I just practiced. But one, two, three, four, five. Let's say, and um, I put something like one means that uh, I don't believe it is humans, um, and two I think something else, and three I think in the middle somewhere, and four it's mostly humans and five definitely humans whatever okay so I'm putting in uh, descriptions and values so you can see uh, the descriptions are nice because these are human friendly and the codes are useful because they are going to be numerically able to analyze whether people put in the values one two three four five uh, for various numerical functioning and analysis later um, uh, and so it goes on. So you can see, that, you know, I've got various fields or domain names I put in, um, age, gender, and a certain type of question, and, and so on. And you can see how you can play around with the field type, domain type, and so on here. 
um, when you're happy with this you uh, you put them in uh, let's just cancel that because I think it will have kept my old values without the changes in okay yeah these are the ones I did before which uh, were put in properly anyway um, so you can always keep going back and changing these and editing these uh, as you can see um, and what you've created here is something called a file uh, geo database um, so this was the new one I had um, when you have created a one this one climate change survey version one I called it just a test thing uh, the next stage is to then from that you can see I've picked it itself the file geo database and then within it I've got um, got various sub menu that I've uh, right clicked my mouse for and I've got under here new and things I can choose I'm going to pick a new feature class this time so um, let's just try that here so it'll ask me for a name for my feature class which uh, I'll just call test for the moment alias uh, this is a test and then it says what type of uh, feature class is it? Is it a polygon, a shape, a line, and so on? So these might be points, dots that people are adding to the map. I go next. Um, I need to pick a coordinate system. So to use it in ArcGIS Online, I believe the right one to pick. I think the geographic coordinate systems here is uh, to go under world. And then at the bottom here to pick WGS 1984. Um, if uh, you know more about it than me, then there are other options you might be picking for other reasons, but this is uh, what I picked in order to use it in ArcGIS Online. Uh, so I pick Next. Um, I don't change anything there. I pick Default on that one, and so it comes up to this screen. Um, and this is where I can type in a, a field name for my feature class. So my one might be Age here. And then it says, well, what type of uh, data is this? And I say, OK, Age is going to be a long integer numerical data and you'll see now that uh, it's given me a choice for alias so I can keep it as age or age in years or something I can change to that if I so wish um, uh, null values whether it can be blank or not uh, so I'll allow it for the moment um, and then under domain you'll see here it, it knows it's linked to this geo database file that I've made and it gives me the choices of anything that's got an integer in so you'll notice that gender is not here because that was a text um, field but I can pick from age, human, natural courses, whatever so I know that age here is the one that I want to be age that I set in the geo database so they match so I'm going to pick that one um, and so it goes on so I might have gender and I pick gender here and I say this is going to be a text field and and this time again I can change the alias and under the domain it's only got gender to pick from because none of the others that I've put in this example were text fields and numbers so I can't pick them from this section and then I might have question one for example and this is going to be a long integer and the first question is going to be uh, this human or natural causes for example so basically I'm making a feature class, feature service, well feature class and uh, which is a point layer and linking it to this domain which has these coded values in restricting the types of variables that can be put in and when I'm happy with that I say finish and what you'll notice is it then actually drops it into my uh, map in our uh, map here um, and you can see I've done one earlier, so I've got these two that I've just created, the test one and uh, just now, and the one I've created before, I'll get rid of the test one for the moment, just to keep it simple. Uh, the next thing you need to do is to um, make sure you're signed into ArcGIS Online, so just check out, check here under the file, under menu that you're signed in, I've already signed in. Um, and then once you've signed in, then you would go to File and Share As, and you share it as a service. So this is now going to take this... Um, feature class and make it into what's called a feature service in ArcGIS Online in your account. So you need to have an ArcGIS Online account to be able to do all this. So um, I share it as a service, publish a service, I uh, follow these instructions through um, and it says my hosted service, uh, give it a name so I might call it test1, uh, continue 
Um, and then there are certain things you can set here. So at the moment, uh, I can't change any parameters, and that's because under the capabilities, it's just a tile layer. So I want it to be a feature layer, so I call feature access. I don't think I need tiles, so I'm going to turn that off. If you go into parameters now, you can see that you can change certain things like the properties, the maximum number of records uh, that can be shown in any particular map when this layer is brought up. So uh, if you keep it to 1,000, it makes it quick to use, but if you increase that, you can see more dots at any one time. Um, on your maps. Uh, feature access, I can say can people create or delete and query and update features and so on, so I can control that here. Um, as people are going to be entering data on this uh, layer, again you can choose what you like there. Um, you have to type in some summary data, what this is all about, this is a climate change view survey, some tags for it, description about it, and if you wish credits and access use constraints, and the sharing, choose whether you want it shared with everyone or not, and so on. Um, and when you're happy with that, you would click this publish button. I'm not going to do that right now because uh, it'll take a couple of minutes so uh, just to make it quicker but that's all you have to do and it'll do a little bit of processing when it's finished it'll come up with a um, little screen here which uh, will say successfully published so I'm just going to get rid of that uh, for the moment so draft net okay um, now uh, the next thing you'll do is go into ArcGIS online account and you go into your content and it will save it into your default folder within your contents so uh, it won't put it into a subfolder so you might want to move it so if you've got all these subfolders like I've got here um, for various things but it will be in the very top one here your home drive so this is the climate test view one that I did just before uh, starting this recording and uh, this will have appeared uh, in this menu in ArcGIS Online having successfully published it from ArcMap that I just showed you before from here into ArcGIS Online. Um, so at this stage, if you wish, you can move it. So I could, <coughs> excuse me, take it here and move it into a subfolder to clean up uh, where it's located. Um, or I could just go straight into it and have a look at the qualities and features of it in ArcGIS Online. So you can see here that it's created what's called a feature service. There's no data or dots in it at all. Um, I can check the sharing permissions to share the way I wish. I can check under editing that it's um, got the certain editing enabled that I want it to have so that people can use it. Um, but I've done all that. Uh, I would then open it into a map. So I'll go add layer to map. Um, and so what I'm doing now is just bring the feature service into a map here. And uh, you can see here I've already created a map and I've actually put one dot in here before we started. But um, uh, but uh, to show you if you, if you didn't have anything it would just come up as a blank map now um, and you don't need to put any data into it if you want to put data in you can you can use the edit button here uh, you can put a dot in to a map and you'll notice that you've got you know, drop down menus here uh, gender male female to choose from you've got uh, a drop down menu here and so on with those variables that you put in so uh, so that's how you can put data in directly into the map. But if you want to create a geoform, which is what I was saying I wanted to show you how to do, um, then you need to make sure that you've saved the map. So I've saved it as uh, climate change test views. I've already saved this map, so I don't think I'll save it again. Uh, I'll go through the process. OK, uh, save uh, test climate uh, test summary. Test for geoform. Form, sorry. I'm going to type too fast and I'll just put it in my test folder so I can get rid of it and it doesn't clutter up anything else. Okay, so I've just uh, created a new map here. Uh, I'm going to share it as I wish and uh, what I want to do is create a web app. Uh, using the geoform so I'm going to go into collect edit data and I've got various choices here and the geoform is the one I want so I'm going to create the app here and I'm going to call it test geoform for climate uh, test to delete geoform and again I'll just put it into my test folder here okay uh, just to show you the process of creating this uh, geoform from scratch with this particular 
properties in, having moved it through from ArcGIS from a uh, Art map uh, for, with the various constraints in the feature class, and bring it down to ArcGIS Online. <coughs> it's creating a map with it, and then creating a geoform. So, so let's get started. I'm going to start. It says the web map do I want to use test climate? That's fine. Um, the layers I've got in there, all the layers. Well, I've only got one layer in there, so that's fine. Doesn't matter. Uh, I can give it a title. Uh, and description about the form of what people should do to fill it in. So this is a uh, test form, but uh, obviously you type in whatever you need for the form there. Um, so this is the good bit. This is where I get into the form fields that I want to include. So it's recognised that I've got age. I can give it a different label if I want, such as age and years, whatever. Um, and under configure, you'll see that. Um, Got some help text if I want, and it's and uh, what's called a touch spinner. I haven't got any choice on that because uh, there's a large number of numbers to choose between. Um, gender, if you look here, don't need to change the label for that. Um, and uh, again, if I go into help menu, I've got uh, select menu or radio button. So radio buttons just gives two dots there, so I can choose male, female. Um, under knowledge of global warming, you can see that again I might go for a, a filter menu. Um, and belief again, select menu or filter menu, it's the same thing, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, so um, so you can see here that it's it's given me the options to actually constrain the values and to show them in drop down menus and so on in here, which I wouldn't have had if I hadn't set it up this way. Um, you can change other things, play around with it, but um, let's go to the next thing. I can choose how the, uh, how the layout and look of the form is. And uh, a little bit about the view, I'm going to skip through that for the moment, and various options to do with um, how the map looks and what the pins look like when they're dropped onto the map and so on. Let's pick a yellow one to show it's different and go to preview. So let's have a look what this uh, form is going to look like now compared to a normal geoform without these constraints in. So it's got the name, test form, test climate and so on. And this time you can see the age and years is constrained uh, in its entry from uh, using the plus or minus scales, I can pick male or female in uh, in boxes there, in radio boxes. As I say, ignore my typo from earlier. Um, global warming is in a sort of drop-down menu box, and the belief about global warming uh, is a drop-down menu box there. So it's very different to normal geoform. It constrains what data goes in. Quite a useful thing to be able to do sometimes. Uh, location is as normal. I'll just put a, a dot here. And, uh, and so on, submit entry. So that's how it will look at the at the end. Uh, next, save and exit. So I've created my geoform, uh, and uh, it will be saved in the account, and I can make sure that the geoform is saved and shared as I want it, so that people can enter data into it. And if I open it, the application here, then you'll see that geoform has these various uh, constraints in, just like we saw in the preview. Uh, version here of how to enter data into it and submit the entry. Um, so that's uh, an overview of how to create uh, restricted sort of coded domains, they're called coded entry for geoforms, quite useful. A bit of a process, not for uh, the average user perhaps, um, but uh, something that's quite useful to know if you've got ArtMap and uh, then you can uh, wait that link from creating the file geodatabase that I showed you here and then the feature class um, in ArtMap and then sending that out to ArtGIS Online as a feature service and then it will have those various constraints and values in that you can use uh, in Geoforms as well to constrain the entry of the various values in that, so quite a useful um, workflow there hopefully for people working through that. It took me a while to work it out myself. Um, a bit of help from Esri UK support on that which I appreciate um, and puzzling it out myself a little bit as well to try and work out the various steps to make it all work properly. Um, my name is Raphael Heath, Head of Geography at the Royal High School Bath. hope you find that uh, a useful review of how to uh, apply this particular skill in ArcGIS Online.